there's, uh, there's definitely perfume in it. Today's review looks at a video card sent by Yeston, purveyors of such fine products as the RX 580 2048 Cute Pet Edition. Yeston also made the Cute Pet Micro ATX case, evaluated by our in-house cat expert and CEO Snowflake. And further, Yeston made the RX 5700 XT Waifu Edition. Now Yeston is back with a vengeance, so strong that it smells like perfume. They, they literally sprayed this thing with perfume. Although the Sekiro looks like a bit of a meme video card, we're gonna treat this like a real review. We'll go through all of the metrics for it, pressure, thermals, noise, and everything else, and talk about if this video card in particular is worth looking at for reasons beyond the obvious. Before that, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. We use Squarespace for our own GN store and juggle complex multi-piece orders all the time with it. Squarespace makes it fast for us to roll out new products with detailed pages full of galleries, videos, and descriptors. It's also useful for your own resume sites, for photographer or project portfolios, or for starting your new small business idea. There's never been a better time to try and start your new business than right now and we can vouch that Squarespace makes it easy. Visit squarespace.com slash gamersnexus to get 10% off your first purchase with Squarespace. By the way, that reaction to the perfume, that was real. We were talking with Yeston and they told us that uh, it's aromatherapy and they say that the smell can last for one to two years. In spite of Yeston's sometimes cringy on the nose backplate designs, the company has also made some genuinely really cool products. So this one was the first that we had looked at. They called it the Cute Pet, and it's, uh, use your imagination, either a dog or a cat, but it's an animal, and it looks cool because it went as far as custom shaping the shroud to match the theme. And this could be applied anywhere. You could apply it to more traditional gamer type things, and certainly we've seen Asus try to do some of this by branding its cards with IP from game developers to see a company come out and do something that's a little more risky like this where there's costs involved in investing in custom tooling and molds to make a shroud that really doesn't fit on any other product ever. That, that takes a little bit of guts and in this sense it paid off because Yeston uh, became known to us and a lot of other people in a market that otherwise hadn't really heard of them. Yeston doesn't sell to the US market in a major way and so it's still trying to get some discovery in Western markets. And that brings us to today's video card, which is a new waifu edition, I suppose, uh, RX 6700 XT. The performance, as usual, will be the same as basically all 6700 XTs, so we won't be doing gaming benchmark numbers today because they don't matter. Just look at our 6700 XT review, that's how it performs. What we can look at is the quality of materials, and in terms of the shroud and the mold quality, it's actually fairly high overall. There are some imperfections on here more than we would see and some more traditional molds. And it does mar a little bit easily as you put it down on surfaces, but it does, you, you can kind of buff it out. Uh, but overall build quality is something we'll be looking at. The thermal performance, pressure maps of the cold plate versus the silicon, and overall how this thing does. It does have dual BIOS, by the way. So it's got some higher quality features on it, despite obviously being very focused on the looks. And to give Yeston credit, it does do a good job with thematics and attention to detail, as you'll see in our teardown of this thing. This is one thing that the company has always gotten uh, right with its video card designs and its case design back there. Even if you aren't a particularly huge fan of what Yeston puts on the back plates, uh, they do a good job with the molding and getting the theme to match together. But that's more on the subjective side, and you may be more interested in some of the designs that they have coming up later. So some background. Yeston products mostly can be found on AliExpress. We haven't seen them many other places yet. The company is named Injia Xuan, and they're working on a couple of different designs, including this one that they sent us with a demon on the backplate instead. So Yeston's trying to branch out away from just the waifu market. Uh, assuredly, the waifu market is a large one, that it can tap into, but at some point, they gotta, they gotta do something else. So the Demon design was one we saw coming up. We'd really like to see some more custom shrouds like the cute pet card. That, was, that took a bit more effort than a paint job, but uh, they're working on more. So the new cards are in a series called Liu Dao Binjia, which is like a soldier-themed thing. We're not sure if that's an actual anime or if it's just a thing that Yestin invented, but that's what's coming up next. 
And if these interest you, but you were looking for a more traditional red and black gamer type of coloring, then it might be one to pay attention to. Enough of that, let's get into the teardown and then we'll look at the performance numbers and see how it does for real in a non-meme review. Because in this market, uh, this might be one of the only cards you can get depending on when you check the retailers. <laughs> so this might be a legitimate option. You, you might have an excuse for buying this. This is what we're going for here. You, you might be able to say, there was nothing else available, even though you secretly wanted it. So that's what we're going to look at now. Okay, so let's start out with the... <coughs> oh, mm. There's... Uh, there's, uh, there's definitely perfume in it. So we're going to start with a, <coughs> with a teardown. Very strong. That's, they, went a little, they went a little heavy. It's kind of gross, guys. Uh, so... First thing, there was perfume in the box. Ooh, there's, it's definitely for sure in the card too. Uh, anyway, we're gonna do, I don't know if that would, I don't think that would show up in clear and imaging. Maybe if we heated the card up first, you could see the perfume ball around it. But we're gonna open this up and do a teardown first. Uh, testing has already been complete at this point. You can see we've got thermocouple wires sticking out of here. That's not standard, obviously. And there, this thing genuinely still smells. I think we've had it for like over a month at this point. And I feel like just being near it, you could, the perfume is very strong. Uh, I am not personally fond of it, but I'm sure somebody, they, 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 they went all in on this theme. That's the nicest thing I can say about it. Uh, anyway, there's an RGB header sticking out here. We can see one, two, three, or five copper heat pipes at the end there. The aluminum fin stack is actually very thin. So there's not a lot of surface area there on the fin stack. And then we've got an eight plus six for power. There is a switch up here. That one says lamp on and off. So that's gonna be the LEDs. So the other one just says alternate and standard. Uh, so just a bio switch basically. So the mold quality and the, the paint is actually overall pretty good. You can see some rough edges along the top and this white here uh, does get marred pretty easily, so it'll it'll blacken fairly easily. When I took it apart the first time, it uh, had some marks on it at the end, but they, they mostly buffed out. I think Keegan took care of that for footage. There's a, a couple of imperfections in the mold work and the manufacturing, but overall, not stuff that you would really notice day to day. Print quality is fairly good. I think this is just a digital print because I can't feel much of a height change between these two. So I'm pretty sure this is just a digital print where the white's going on at the same time as everything else, as opposed to a white backplate with then uh, design printed on it. So let's do disassembly. Uh, we've got four screws for, of course, the GPU retention kit. And then one, two, three, four, going through the PCB and into the base plate. And there's a red like cancel sign through here. So they, it's not technically a warranty void of removed sticker, but the intent is obvious. For this teardown, I am going to be working on the mod mat and tracking the screws on our grid. If you would like one of your own for a PC building or a modification surface, you can go to store.gamersnexus.net and either order one of the ones that's designs that's in stock or back order this one that I'm working on. I don't know if this is a thing. If, if this is like a known thing, I guess post it in the comments. I'm not sure what's, uh, what's custom and what's lifted or what's licensed. Okay, that takes care of all the screws on the back. So now we'll be able to separate the cooler. I'll note this too. They did paint the uh, PCIe slot cover like actually white. So. That's kind of cool. Most of the time you'll just see those as standardized. Uh, there's the millions of these are made a year and they're all standard. So it's very rare you see alterations to them because factories just don't want to do it because they get so many orders for them standard. Why would they change it? I feel like if we had the right filter on the camera, you'd be able to see perfume just like steaming off of the board. <laughs> and when I first opened this card, I started sneezing a lot because it was the the smell was that strong. Uh, I'm going to give them credit again for some really small attention to detail stuff. So 
uh, the coating for the plated through hole here, the coating on all of the plated through holes, instead of kind of a standard copper color, they've actually mostly color matched it to the rest of the palette around it. So like this aluminum back plate is uh, roughly the same color. So uh, it's not something you're really ever gonna see unless you're taking it apart, but super small attention to detail stuff that in my books, when I see small details like that, it tells me that somebody actually cared about working on this product. And uh, you know, sometimes it's, it's the person who does the work that has the least impact on the performance, so maybe it doesn't help it at the end of the day. And sometimes it's the whole team. But it's a good sign in general to see someone put effort in. Copper cold plate, no vapor chamber to be found here. That's fine, don't need them on everything. In fact, most partner models don't use them. And uh, connected to the copper cold plate is five heat pipes. They are six mil heat pipes just by eye. The fin stack, the aluminum fin stack, is very thin up here. It's a little bit of surface area, but there's not much to work with there. The shroud and upside here is not actually obstructing exhaust. A lot of times you'll see companies pull these shrouds all the way over the fins and just block all the, the exit paths for the air. No idea why they do that. It seems like such an obvious thing, but uh, in this instance, the shroud is not blocking the fins. So sadly, that is a, a major positive at this point. And this is all fairly standard, this stuff. So they're mounting the FETs into uh, contacting them to a base plate, contacting that to the fin stack. And you can see they're actually using L-shaped fins immediately below the contact plate. Fairly standard, but good practice because it gives more surface area and the airflow there is not going to benefit it. Now, one place that this deviates a little bit is over here. So you can see this small uh, aluminum heat sink that's covering the left half of the FETs. And we'll test these. We'll show the thermals for these in our data. And that does not ever contact the rest of the heat sink. You know, if they were, if they were truly doing the marketing work of most of the companies in this industry, then they'd talk about how these flower, they'd call them like, I don't know, what's, what's like a science name for flowers? <laughs> I did look up a word on Wikipedia for, for my commentary, but that's still no different than what most of the companies <laughs> would do when they're marketing their stuff. It's like if they called them Magnolia Phyta blades with a special low resistance technology that gives you high velocity and static pressure or something. But no, and they, they just fully commit. They're just flowers. That's all there is to it. Okay, the small one comes off now. That's all there is to that. Pretty simple. The construction quality of this backplate is actually very good. So fairly stiff backplate, uh, not thick enough that it's going to cause clearance issues in anything that we test which is also a good thing. Unfortunately, however, they are not leveraging any of this space to make additional contact to the backside of the PCB. And as a reminder, you've probably heard me say this many times at this point, but memory is flip chip BGA. So it's a ball grid array BGA package that is flip chip. The actual piece of silicon is closer to the PCB than it is to the top of this black packaging. And this whole thing together is just called a chip, simple enough. But uh, anyway, that does mean that these are often benefited at least a little bit by some thermal pads on the backside. So they would benefit by having some here and then on, uh, I guess that would be this side uh, to, to pull some heat away from the board. And you could, they could put a thermal pad along the VRM moss area as well. You can see here, uh, I'll point this out before someone in the comments does. So there's some, there's some yellowing up here on the PCB in the white. That particular yellowing is not because the PCB is white or anything like that or sunlight or anything. That particular yellowing is just like flux marks from whatever solder they were running. I think, Yeston, if you're watching, I think it would be cool if you did like a, like Easter eggs on the PCB next time, like the Atari whatever that, the Atari VCS new console had some cool Easter eggs on it. I think that would be neat. So a couple controllers to point out. We have an International Rectifier 35T17. We've got an on-semi NCP81022N 
There's actually a couple blanks on this board. They could expand it if they wanted to. So down here, there's space for an RGB header. And over here, there's space for a fan header. So special new technology in the SMT line, <laughs> like modified service mount technology line. It goes through, it goes through the belt, goes through solder mask, stops, gets dunked in a gallon of perfume, <laughs> baked in the oven. Okay, so that's gonna be it for the teardown. We can get into the uh, benchmarking and analysis of everything else at this point, including pressure testing for this cold plate against the GPU silicon. Our pressure testing for the video card is up first, and this will show the cold plate contact with the silicon. This is a pseudo color image that was produced using chemical paper and a NIST traceable pressure scanner that, as we always say, was made possible for us to purchase by our Patreon supporters on patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Thanks for the support from those of you helping out. The image shows that there's relatively full contact between the die and the cold plate. Pressure centrally is stronger than on the outsides, as we would expect, with the light gaps in coverage in the bottom left of the silicon along the edge. Overall, we'd call this good contact. We only have gaps in the lower left edge, and they're not so wide or so low pressure that paste can't cover for them. And it's not a flatness issue either, it's just a pressure issue. We'll look at that in a moment. We'll put a few other scans of the RTX 30 series cards on the screen as well. These are some that we looked at back when we just started doing a lot of pressure testing for GPUs, and it helps show that GPUs can be hit and miss with mounting pressure. It's important that video cards use enough screws for the heavier heat sinks to firmly secure the cold plate to the GPU, but without going overboard. Larger heat sinks that only use the standard four screws risk poor pressure, and that's particularly true in standard orientation, where the weight slowly pulls the heat sink away from the board with sag over time. Surface flatness was also good on this card. As measured from a known zero point on a special depth consistency tool, we found the Yeston 6700 XT to be on the better side of average for our surface flatness testing. The cold plate had a median depth of about 11 microns, with core tiles out to 10 and 17 microns, measuring outliers at 7 and 30. Overall, the cold plate was manufactured well and is of consistent depth. For thermals, we added thermocouples to probe the flip chip side of the flip chip BGA packages for the memory modules. We also tested the VRM MOSFET thermals on the side that's isolated from the rest of the heatsink. So looking down at the GPU, that would be the VRM to the left of the GPU closest to the I.O. The card did well for memory and VRM MOS thermals in both the auto-controlled and the fixed 40 dBA conditions. We added 40 dBA noise normalized to GPU cooler testing to our suite probably around eight years ago at this point, and we've used it as a means to get every cooler on the same page. No brute forcing with fan speed allowed. It's also useful because auto control just follows a VBIOS curve anyway. It ultimately settles on whatever temperature is pre-programmed as the target. So it sort of can lead people to think that the video card is responsible or at least its cooler is responsible for the temperature more so than anything else, when in actuality, the VBIOS is responsible for a lot of it. Memory was well within spec at 64 degrees for the unit that we tested. The GPU edge temperature ran at 75 degrees Celsius in a 21C environment. That's not a delta value as a reminder, it's just the reading. And it was 73C when running at 40 dBA. The junction temperature ran at about 90 degrees Celsius, that's on the high side, but for AMD, TJ Maxx stops higher at around 110C, rather than 100C. We'd still like to see junction lower. The edge to junction delta is pretty large at 15 degrees for the gap, but this could be resolved with more mounting pressure as we saw in the pressure map. We also evaluate the frequency in our video card reviews. This is useful for determining the operating range and the impact to frequency from VBIOS power limits or from thermals. In the instance of the Yeston 6700 XT, the card immediately spiked to 2520 megahertz with occasional peaks nearing 2530 megahertz but ultimately it bounced around between roughly 2490 and 2520 megahertz. We'll call an average at about 2510 megahertz. Compared to the AMD reference card, the Yeston card operates lower. AMD's reference 6700 XT plotted around 2550 to 2580 megahertz in our review, with an average closer to 2560. An extra 50 megahertz on the average isn't a huge difference practically. We're talking maybe a couple FPS in most games. So basically test error but it's a technical victory. This plot shows the default VBIOS versus the alternative VBIOS that's on the card. 
they're almost exactly identical. They might even be identical in the programming because there's a difference of a couple megahertz here, but nothing major. We also noticed that the chip level power consumption was equal under both vBIOS options, so it wasn't drawing any more or less power, which is the most common way to use a vBIOS switch. This final chart shows the noise levels at each major RPM interval. The Esten card runs at about 35 dBA at 20 inches distance when operating at 35% RPM, or about 1300 RPM. The average noise level ranges closer to 38 to 41 when operating, depending on how heavy the workload is and the ambient environment. The card tops out around 60.8. This is extremely loud, but it's similar to what we've seen from most other video cards when manually maxed to 100% speed. So that's it for this one. Again, Yestin, it's, it's a little bit weird, but the performance is really not bad on this thing. You would think by looking at these cards where so much more effort has gone into the appearance of it uh, than marketing any other aspect of the card that the performance would suffer. But it's doing okay. It's not the best thermal performer for the GPU we've seen. There's a little bit of a wide edge to junction gap in the temperature, about 15 degrees from junction to edge. We'd like to see that brought closer together, which could be done with a better pressure uh, applied to the silicon from the heatsink. And that can be done with different screw orientation locations or spring tensions. So a couple things that could be improved on, and the main one there is the edge to junction temperature. But memory temperature did actually surprisingly well. The MOSFETs that we measured did fine as well. So everything's within spec here, and it's actually operating like a real product. Because this is so looks focused, we'll talk about the looks for a little bit. Uh, not something we commonly talk about for products, but this is the key selling point. So Yestin has done well to custom mold everything. Now, most video cards are custom molded, but a lot of the time what you'll see is it's a, a custom mold for a series that gets reused for years or at least for multiple models. You'll see this with MSI, for example, with the twin Frozer series where the same coolers were used for about three generations. This, however, is fully molded for the Sakura where you have uh, custom fan cutouts. The molding over here has, I guess, flowers and other embellishments on it. They've mixed in some softer blue and purple with the white. Uh, so a lot of attention went to this card's visual uh, elements and even the PCB being white with the sort of platinum color uh, plated through holes with a white bracket. It's attention to detail and that's important to see when evaluating a product because that can scale elsewhere too. We didn't actually see any major incompetence in design. The thermal pads were all placed where they made sense. Uh, there was only one spot that could have been done better and that's the back plate. And short of that, you'd have to go for a, a wider cooler to allow for more service area in that fin stack, but it's actually pretty standard otherwise. So that's it for this one. We're glad that Yestin is trying to expand this line out of just the obvious low hanging fruit uh, waifu design video cards and getting into, into some different stuff like the Demon one for whatever that's worth. Uh, it, it shows that Yestin's not only chasing a very specific and easily exploitable trend and is actually trying to do some other stuff while it's got some attention from uh, from other markets around the world. And Yestin, if you're watching, please find a way to incorporate more custom shaping of the shroud like this one beyond just sort of the, well, what's going on here, which is basically a normal looking shroud, except it's colored specially. But anyway, that's it for this one. Surprisingly, not bad. And uh, the, the only thing we would change is maybe the, the perfume smell. It was, it was on there a little bit heavy. But other than that, thanks for watching. As always, subscribe for more. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net or patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Stops out directly. And we'll see you all next time.